What's up, you guys? Welcome to the March 29th edition of NBA 3-Ball, presented by Establish the Run. I'm your host, Mike Gallagher. Get ready to break down some of the Saturday stuff, obviously the Sunday stuff, and some news in 10 minutes. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe, please. And let's start with the mainstream story of the day. That's LaMarcus Aldridge officially signing with the Brooklyn Nets. Kind of a surprise. We all thought that he was going to Miami, which made more sense. And Brooklyn just keeps getting dudes to roadblock Nicholas Claxton, a.k.a. the Alchemist, a.k.a. Daddy Claxton. So, yeah, that's rough. Uh, I think the the biggest fantasy takeaway is it's, it's going to be really hard for Claxton to keep hitting these low 20s with so many roadblocks. Obviously, Kevin Durant is going to be back at some point. Still has a week to go. He's doing some 4-on-4 four four stuff. So they're ramping him back up. So it sounds like he's pretty healthy. They're just being careful. And then also Kyrie Irving's also off the injury report. So the James Harden sky-high troposphere ceiling is kind of gone a little bit. But still obviously going to be really good. But these guys like Bruce Brown and other guys that you may have been looking at are going to kind of go away with Kyrie back. Some big names on the Monday injury report. Let's start with Bradley Beal is questionable with a hip injury. Scott Brooks said he hit the floor really hard. And they're going to see how he feels. So that will be something to watch. Uh, Interestingly, stat-wise... His front court touches have dropped from 51 a game pre-break to just 33 uh, with only a minute and .2 uh, minutes per game difference. That's a huge dip. So obviously Westbrook's a big factor on that. A couple other things. It's not a good rhythm. He's not really, maybe he's not healthy all the way. That knee thing popped up, but you know he'll be better. He's Bradley Beal. Uh, Jerome Robinson also kind of closed in the last game. Scott Brooks said he won an offensive punch. Uh, and they are going to start Denny Avi. It sounds like going forward. Scott Brooks says he wants to activate him and kind of let him play through everything. So besides him being maybe a viable punt play, especially if Beal sits, um, the other takeaway is, man, their defense is going to be real bad. Uh, Obvious is not there defensively yet. Moving to OKC, the big news fantasy-wise for the weekend was Al Horford's out for the season for tanking, basically, uh, to get Moses Brown, who signed a contract today. Man, Moses. Uh, 17 and 19 and a half against the Celtics fell apart in the second half. That's fine. Luke Cornett actually did him dirty, but yeah, um, obviously Moses Brown. Been talking about him since the first day. First day after the break, he is just cleared for takeoff here, uh, and they'll continue to go small. Lou Dort also has a concussion, so that's great news for Taylor Maladon, who kind of will step aside to let Lou Dort run the offense and drive and get downhill. So uh, Mark Dagnall said he wants Maladon to be more involved. So I'd expect Maladon to be. You know, pretty good fantasy play uh, going forward, at least until Dort gets back. Some good news for the Warriors. Stephen Curry did practice on Sunday. He is questionable to play against the Bulls tonight. Probably be game time. We'll see. So this affects a lot of people. Obviously, those fringy guys, your Damian Lees, Kent Bazemores, um, Nickel Mannion, those guys will kind of go away. But the big question to me would be how much Jordan Poole cuts into Kelly Oubre's minutes. Comments about Uber coming off the bench next year if he comes back, which obviously makes sense. Clay Thompson, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I expect Uber has been pretty bad uh, to lose playing time. Not just Pool, not just Manny. I expect Uber ceiling to take a hit here. So we'll see uh, if he could do any better. Gets a pretty decent matchup against the Bulls, who just looked horrendous uh, in the last game. Billy Donald even said how they just weren't in a good rhythm together. Zach was like looking for Booch at the wrong time and just wasn't. Uh, in sync, so we'll see if they can improve against the Warriors team. They're, oh boy, uh, their defense has just been a disaster for the last few weeks. Kind of the other big story from Saturday was Malik Beasley getting over his suspension, coming out, and the Wolves just got smacked. One of the worst losses I've seen of the season. And Chris Finch put his dudes back out there in garbage time. Man, Anthony Edwards, it's, it's not looking great. He had some buckets late, but I don't feel great about him at all going forward uh, with Malik Beasley and him essentially playing the same position. Like, it's not off the table that Anthony Edwards comes off the bench, which sounds insane, but this is going to be a real ugly fit. This defense is going to get roasted. But McDaniels, Jaden McDaniels, 36 minutes, starting four. Uh, Gerson Rosa said they want a defender out there at all times. He's like their only wing defender right now with Josh Akogi still out, but... They are going to get destroyed by Brooklyn today. Suns squeak out a win at Charlotte. Great comeback from the Hornets, but Suns get it done. Mikel Bridges, man, career-high six steals, and they were mostly not cheapies. Uh, Just reading the defense, pick some pick sixes. Just great defense. He's so freaking good. Um, Yeah, 13 points to eight boards, four dimes. He he helped win you a week this week. Uh, Booker, big minutes, 35 points. He's starting to look a little bit better. Chris Paul's obviously fine. DeAndre Ayton's starting to come around a little bit. 
you're like, you're starting to see consistent playing time after he was in the low twenties a couple weeks ago. Just couldn't really string games together. Uh, and also, Torrey Craig's kind of not going anywhere. He's not going to be fantasy relevant, but does take a little bit of upside off of maybe Jay Crowder some days. Obviously, Cam Johnson he can't use anymore, uh, and even Dara Sharich, you know, cutting away from him uh, at getting four minutes is affecting him too. Hornets almost pulled out as Devonta Graham got real hot late, gets to 30 points, needed a big game, he just tough shot after tough shot, took 16 freaking threes, uh, so that's an encouraging sign. I wouldn't move the needle on it too much. Um, Malik Monk did not play, so that helped. He was probable, got rolled out, sounds minor, should be okay. Uh, we saw a little bit of Caleb Martin and in the first half, and then Brad Wanamaker in the second half for just spot minutes, but this is basically an eight-man rotation. We know Borrego's running pretty tight, uh, so those guys are, are definitely benefiting. P.J. Washington... Didn't score, but 44 minutes, you know, pretty good non-scoring stats. Certainly going to look at him uh, as a guy that's op- an option. And um, Miles Bridges also really benefited from those small ball lineups. But again, Malik Monk kind of forced his hand to go that way. So I wouldn't read too much into these stat lines. Blazers get the win in Tampa Bay. Just a great game all around. Everybody really contributed. Good old team win, as they say. Uh, Norm Powell was in foul trouble. 27 minutes. Probably would have been in the mid-30s had he not gotten in foul trouble. Looks like he's going to be okay. Certainly will drop a little bit. But not a guy you should be dropping on your team. Let him kind of see how it goes. This team plays pretty bad defense. It could be in some high-scoring games. Robert Covington, man, plays, played some center again. The defensive sets are showing up. He's been in a groove here, so you should feel really great about him. Um, Nurk and Cantor are kind of filling some minutes, but Cantor's certainly trending down, which we expected. Nurk looks pretty comfortable overall, and CJ came up real big late in this game for a 23-point full stat line. Late scratch for Kyle Lowry, and he may not even travel for the back-to-back. It sounds like he will, but that's not great, uh, especially for a guy who is just in trade rumors and a team that's not winning games. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. was horrible, missed a lot of open shots, took a lot of weird mid-range contested ones I didn't like, uh, so he's got some work to do to fit in. Uh, Aaron Baines got the start because they were just running out of wing defenders, uh, so they were kind of forced to go bigger here. It certainly makes sense against those Blazer bigs. We know Nurse wants to go small, so you're obviously not adding Baines. Uh, and then don't forget, Kyle Lowry not playing was big for Chris Boucher. So uh, I think Boucher is going to be a sell high uh, once Lowry comes back, assuming he's okay. Uh, but Van Vliet, disappointing, really popular DFS play. Was kind of just kind of just so-so. Uh, OG is definitely more involved in the offense. Nick Nurse said he's going to do that. Uh, I expect OG to have a huge finish to his season. The Nuggets just destroy the Hawks. Got real hot in the third quarter to put the game away, get it into garbage time, which explains kind of the low minutes for your Aaron Gordons and those dudes. Gordon looked Pretty good. Had some nice cuts. Ran the floor well. Played some pretty good defense, which they needed. uh, As Michael Porter Jr. was kind of hidden on defense a little bit more now that they have some some better depth there. So that'll be uh, helpful for him. Porter Jr. ran ran the floor really well. Looked looked great. Uh, Jamal Murray, you know, not that big shot volume. But he's still going to be able to produce. Obviously, Joker is not going to be affected by anybody. Uh, Jermichael Green's 20-pointer, very, very misleading. Just red hot to start. Uh, and he was the backup five. Mike Mullen said he may mix and match it. JaVale McGee wasn't in the rotation. Uh, but Green was kind of the, the ninth man in the rotation behind Dozier, Campazzo, and Millsap. So don't read too much into that. Not much to say on the Hawks. The only thing is DeAndre Hunter has swelling still. So that's not great. Uh, obviously, you're not playing Tony Snell. But a little bit more upside for Bogdan. Gallinari and those guys. Lakers get the win. Some pretty good games, but the headline here is Andre Drummond is going to join the Lakers. So that's going to really hurt Montrezl Harrell. It's going to really hurt Markeith Morris. It's going to hurt the Winks because they're going to play bigger as well. So Kyle Kuzma has a little bit of value lost. A little bit of Schroeder value lost. Wouldn't go crazy to think he's going to fall off or anything. And pretty good spot for Drummond until AD and LeBron come back. He's going to be a pretty... Highly used player uh, and hit the glass. He should get some pretty decent volume. Magic dropped this one. Michael Carter Williams suffered a right knee contusion. Didn't look bad. Uh, maybe day to day, but it's the Magic. They're probably going to be careful. Also, Terrence Ross still not back from that knee injury. So we saw a lot of Chase and Randall who started the third quarter. They actually closed with Dwayne Bacon, James Ennis, Otto Porter Jr., Chuma Okiki, and Wendell Carter Jr., who was the 10th man in the rotation, crazily enough. But did play late, played pretty well overall, would be more encouraged about him. And yeah, this team has a lot of pickups, which we get to right now. So Edge page, pretty much all magic. Uh, Chuma, I think, is pretty much must grab. Uh, Mo Bamba, pretty impressive, but it's going to be a tight squeeze. So I wouldn't kind of run to add him. Uh, Dwayne Bacon should have some value until Terrence Ross comes back, then he'll kind of go away. Uh, Cody Martin, if you did want to think that Malik Monk is out, I kind of think it's minor, but just to throw him out there. Uh, Chase Aranda would benefit without MTW. And RJ Hampton uh, is kind of the backup too now uh, as this team just can't keep point guards healthy. 
That's it. I'll have more ads on the Solo Pod later today, so check back for that. Thanks. Catch you later.